Hey, good morning, family. How are y'all doing? Um, I have a hard word to give today. And uh, I, I, I'll, I ask you to be patient with me here. Um, you know, as a prophet, you see things in the future, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, I want to say this to you all. I, I, I take this very serious. And the, and the pressure and the weight of it is, is a lot. Whenever the Lord visits you like he does. When Jesus comes and visits you and you go through that refiner's fire that I've always talked to you all about, um, it changes you. And in that process of that refiner's fire, you lose yourself and everything else around you doesn't really matter anymore. Money, fame, whatever. I do it all for him. The whole thing is out of compassion and love for Jesus. Nothing else matters to me. You all are focused, a lot of people, I won't say you all, a lot of people are focused about validation here and what money they can have, what big house, what big car, what, what uh, TV program, whatever. But when you sit at the feet of Jesus and you intercede for people that are broken and you feel the heart of God and you go into the rivers like I'm talking about and you're by yourself and you feel like you have friends and they abandoned you and all you have is just your wife and your kids and that's all you really need maybe you're alone or whatever then there's Jesus in those in those times of praying for people he comes and brings a person to you in the spirit realm and you you see him and then you 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 pick him up and you intercede for him and you love on him in the spirit and they don't even know that you're doing it I'll pass people on the road and um, I'll see a spirit of suicide or whatever on that individual and I'll just break down and just sob and weep for them and intercede for them for hours and I don't even know that individual all I know is I see pain and the Lord will say you need to pray and when you when you get compassion for the lost, you start feeling his heartbeat for people. Um, it changes you. In the last two days, he visited me again in the spirit and um, he started talking to me, like I told you all. Uh, I weep for humanity. For him. Help me, Holy Spirit, to get through this. You see what's coming. In intercessory prayer, you could you could, he tells you the weight of it. He tells you the responsibility of of what's coming. Yesterday was a very intense day for me. Um, I was praying for a pastor. And interceding for some friends 
two days in a row now that he's been just downloading stuff for me. I was driving down the road and I was just interceding and I was in deep intercession like I do when I'm driving around. And all of a sudden, the Lord opened my eyes. And he, he said to me, I'm going to show you some things. And I looked out and I was looking at a grocery store over and I was actually in the grocery store. But he took me to the future. And I saw this massive tent. Massive, massive tent. In the, in the grocery store parking lot. And there was white cots. All in the uh, parking lot of this grocery store. Literally, I, w I would say there was probably a thousand cots, but they were all military kind of cots, but they were white looking, okay? And on these cots, there was bodies, and I saw an IV sitting beside the body, and I saw the person with the sheet over the top of their head, and all these bodies were in this, uh, this uh, grocery store parking lot, and then he took me to the hospital. And all the hospitals were completely full. Completely full. There was no room. And there was military style camps all around the city. And then I saw nurses and doctors that were military. That were uh, trying to take care of these people. And there was nothing they could do for them. They were just comforting them because they were going to die. I saw a, in the spirit, I saw a yellow fog that was all waist high around those people. It looked like, and it was pestilence. It was a pestilence. It was a plague. And that was what the Lord was showing me was. It was waist, it was waist high, but it was coming out of it. It was airborne. It was an airborne virus. And I saw it all at the, at the, at the base of them, all of them all there then the lord took me and i saw a complete shutdown of society beyond anything you can comprehend even worse than 2020 if you thought 2020 was bad this makes that look like child's play it makes it look like uh, this is on steroids beyond anything you can comprehend. We as a nation, we as the as a generation, have never seen this before, the Lord said. He said, this, what is about to happen, has not happened for hundreds and hundreds of years. I saw, he told me it was the same uh, it would be a type and shadow of the Black Death in the 1300s. I saw um, nobody able to work in factories. Nobody able to work and um, make money of any kind. It was it a was complete shutdown worldwide again. No, no, no grocery stores were able to be opened. There, it was like essentials only, like if you could go in there. But it was people were so scared of this thing that they there was no movement of humanity because if you got it, you you weren't here no more. There was no anti thing for your arm. Nothing. There was nothing to stop it. Anything. Anybody who uh, contracted this thing was gone. Then I saw 350 million again worldwide. Then I saw 30 over the United States, 30. And and the Lord warned me about the of the mash things that would happen here. I was shown um uh all paper currency was was completely done away with because people were afraid to touch it and that's more of a digital platform i saw it was an implementation even more because of uh being afraid to touch it i saw um 
uh, mega churches completely shut down. A complete melt, melting of uh, a financial structure beyond anybody's comprehension that we've never seen before. And that, that was like we thought 2020 was bad. This was, this was far more than anything I can tell you. The people passing away. Like I said, white sheets over them and everything. It was very heavy. And the Lord showed me a massive hurricane again. But it was not a real actual hurricane. It was in the spirit realm. And he said, son, the, 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 the very beginning of the bands are just starting to touch in the spirit realm. They were like, they were, it was a massive hurricane. And he said, the eye of the storm's waving out there for what you're seeing, even as of today. We may be thinking it's turbulent times in the natural with all the stuff we see going on in the world, is what I'm trying to tell you. With, with rioting, with all this stuff. But there was just the outer bands, even, even through 2020, it was just the beginning of the, 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 the band, the, the bands just coming on the shore of the, of the natural of the world. And we hadn't even got to the, to the eye of the storm. It wasn't even in, it would not even, it would not even make landfall. Not even the great winds weren't even here yet. It was just barely the streaks like this. Like you would see on the radar on TV. And he told me, he said, this will be more than just this in the future. It will be, I saw uh, stadiums for when, when the financial system crashes again. He said it will be financial crash. He said there'll be a plague. There's going to be um, economic um, turmoil, like uh, all kinds of stuff worldwide. A, uh, a new digital dollar, a new, a new everything. It's going to be. And then, and then I, 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 I was asking him about. Um, please help me, Spirit. Holy Spirit, I, I, I don't want to skip around. He showed me, like I said, the, whenever they have a big football games and baseball that people won't even be able to afford to pay to get in those stadiums. They won't even, there won't be enough finances though. The people that are, that are, um, that are, they're all broke, but this is some hope. I want to tell you this. Okay. After I saw all the cots and all the stuff, I saw people, men and men and women of God dressed in white and they that the men had white suits on in the in the spirit realm with white ties with white shirts with white slacks and white shoes and outside of them was a glowing uh look like uh honey the honey was saturating them and and there was a a light that shined outside of them that went about three feet. The glory of the Lord was so present on these individuals, and the Lord said, "This will be the remnant that rises up, and there will be a supernatural covering over them when this stuff happens." And I saw a glory glow all over these remnant people. And when the, that, this thing, the plague, whatever this is, tries to get on them, it died because of the, glow, the honey glow. The honey glow ate, the honey glow ate the, 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 that smog, that smog that I told you was waist high. The smog would, would, would try to penetrate the, the honey glow and it would, it would kill it. Okay? The glory of the Lord. And he said this to me. He said, for what is coming, son, you will not survive it if you do not have an understanding in the, of the power of the name of Jesus. He said, the people who are going to walk in, in this honey clove 
will have a revelation of the glory and the power of who of, of, of the Lord inside of them and have a revelation of their covenant, a revelation knowledge, not 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 just a, a saying out of your mouth. He said it will be a rhema word. He said, if you're waiting until this happens, why I'm telling you to tell my people to get in the word? Why I'm telling you to teach my people to pray? He said, if they wait until th this is coming at their door, he said, it will be too late. For this is going to be a development right now. A very fat, you've got to take this serious. This is not something that you can just halfway do. This is going to have to become your breath. Listening and following the leading of the voice of the Lord for your life. I saw big cities, massive cities, um, terrible. I saw rural, 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 royal, rural land, rural land, country. People moving, trying to just get whatever they could to get away from what's going to happen. They wanted to be out in the country and away from everybody. I saw them doing gardens because people were desperate for food because you couldn't, people were scared to bring the trucks, to bring the food to the, to the places, to bring, the government had to step in and, and with, with crappy food and trying to help people with rationings trying to i don't know where how that happens i don't i don't get it but they were trying to feed the people of rationings trying to take care of everybody the best they could but it wasn't good food it was like spam nasty nasty food trying to like like uh, mres you know like like instant meals trying to get people to just to get food in towns major cities because of uh, people not being able to deliver the food, factories being shut down, things like that, because people were dying by the millions. Life as you know it will change even more. But like I said, I saw, I'm going to go back to that. I saw the glory on these people, this, this liquid honey. And they were praying for the people who had that, that, on those cots and the power of God was healing their bodies right there in front of them power of God was raising them up that remnant of people the glorious church rised up in this persecution and then that 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 what I'm talking about and they started praying for the sick and the they started recovering I saw a mass move of God in in darkness and this is what I was trying to tell you Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is going to rise upon you. The glory of the Lord. For, gross, for darkness is covering the earth and gross darkness to cover the people. Do you, it, was a, it was a gross darkness. It was, it was a darkness. But, but you, this is what I want to say to you. People say, why is this happening? Why is all this going on? And this is where I want to say, we are focused on the fruit. Everybody's looking at the fruit of what's going on in society. All the sin, all of the uh, compromise, the, all the, 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 the brainwashing that the media tries to do, all of the drama. Always trying to go ungodly ways. We're trying to change the fruit. But the Lord showed me. It's not the fruit that needs to be changed. You're praying for the fruit to change. But it is the root that needs to be changed. For the root it is what's deep down in the soil of humanity. And where we are as a nation. Where we are as the world. We're, they're dark. He said so. The, the root is changed the tree, the bush, or the, 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 the plant, which displays the, the, the fruit. Okay? So we're trying to attack the fruit. Change the fruit, change the fruit, change the fruit. But you have to change the root. And when you change the root, you'll get the new fruit. 
And the problem is what the Lord was showing me is, is we preach a compromising gospel. We're not teaching people about the name and the power of the blood of Jesus anymore. We're not teaching repentance and holiness. We teach a, a, a lukewarm grace message. And people are so caught up in grace. And, and, and the very thing that you say that you got saved from, you're going back to. You say, I got saved. I'm a born again Christian. But the very thing that you say that you got born again from, you're going back to saying it's okay to live in that lifestyle because grace covers it. There's no holiness. And until there's a repentance, until there's a return around unto God and, 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 and a holiness preaching in the pulpits, there will be a great shifting like you've never seen before. There's a great, great refiner's fire coming in this world like we've never seen before. And you may not like what I'm going to say, but the lifting of the hand, because, because this is where it's at. Where sin, if sin abounds, grace does much more abound. But at the same time, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Okay? And God is a holy God. When I told you I sit, I went into the throne in the in in, in the um, when I in one of my um, visitations I had, I went in and I saw the light. It was everything I could do in front of a holy God, other than just to cry out, "God, I'm, I, I, I repent of all my sins." I felt that that light would burn me up because of how holy and how 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 righteous, how amazing He really is. There is no sin. There is no compromise in God. There is, He is a truth loving God. But God is not a tolerant of sin and unholiness and, un and filth. Yes, His Son covered it in His blood. But His church is living in compromise. They're living ungodly lifestyles. And just like I said, you say I got saved. But the thing you were so excited to say you got saved from, you're going back to and living and it's still saying you're saved. And you can't do that. You can't do that. Every single scripture, even when, when Paul was talking to the church, and Ephesus is the church, when he's writing the letters to the church, he said none of these people... See, if he wouldn't have been talking to them about... Um, a compromising church, that a compromising world that's living in sin and all the things that he said. If you're in adultery, you're if you're in fornication, if you're all these things he named off, he was not talking to the world. Of course, they're living in godliness. He was talking to the church, and he said, "If you're living that way, you will not inherit the kingdom of God." He was warning them of living a compromising lifestyle. He was warning them. Then he talked about he t he talks about it in Ephesians. He talks about it in um, uh, Acts. He talks about a lot of uh, uh, and, and even Jesus says, um, "You prophesied in my name. You you laid hands on the sick in my name. These are believers. You have to have a little bit of ump inside of you. You're laying hands on the people and, and casting out devils." These are people that are seasoned believers, obviously. You don't see baby Christians going around cats and devils out. You're not seeing baby Christians going around laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. You're not seeing them raise the dead. Those are seasoned believers. And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Those are people that have started, that are living in compromise again. There's a part of them that he never knew. You're, you're, you're practicing, you're working, and you're working in the Holy Ghost, and you're walking in the healing miracles, but you don't have a relationship with him. He doesn't know you. And so the Lord is trying to warn his body right now. There's a great shaking coming. There's a great shifting coming. But, he, but, but the only way you're going to get through this is understanding the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. People ask me on the comment section all the time, um, what do I need to do? What do I got to have to um, supply for myself? And I was watching a video from...
from somebody. They sent it to me about the five, and, and I was asking, I've been asking, and, and answered the question. There's four basic needs that you need to, um, to, to, to understand, okay? What is real food? What is real food? What is real money? What is real need? What is real energy? So that's the basic things that I would focus on. What is real energy? What is real money? What is real need? And what is real food? Okay? If we were to lose power for a, uh, for a couple weeks, all your meat's going to go bad if you don't have a way to back it up. All your milk, all your, all your perishable things. How could you survive if you had no power? Okay? You need to think about that. If what I'm telling you happens and there is no food trucks and it lasts for uh, for a time until those those mills come in if this if this happens like I'm saying God forbid I pray it doesn't y'all I I don't want this I'm interceding I, I it really grieves me a lot because it's very heavy but I'm here to warn you it's like the Lord told me he said Brandon when a general dies in the army in a great war, does that general's task cease to exist? Or do you have to raise up a general, another general, to, to achieve the, the victory of that war? And I said, yes. He said, that's what's happening. He said, there's going to be a shifting of old generals going home and new ones coming up. It doesn't mean that the job is finished. It means that it, there's a new person to come and finish the task. It's time for people to rise up in the positions that what God's called them to do because there's a very there's serious days ahead. God's bringing forth new Davids. God's going to bring forth new, new platforms, people that you don't even know. And you're going to say, who are these? Where did they come from? Just kind of like me. The janitor that's been cleaning for years. Just seeking him in my little own little world, in my own real private time, in my little glory dome, is what I want to call it. Yeah, I have my issues. Yeah, we have over stuff we're coming. The refiner's fire has been intense on my life. But I can tell you I've had some very, very, very precious times with the Father sitting at his feet. So I try to tell you, have you sat at the feet of Jesus today? He, 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 he misses you. People have no idea how much he loves you. But in this shifting of what's coming, it's 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 like I would say it's like it's like an umbrella. When the umbrella is lifted, like you say this is what's protecting the people from rain. You're walking in holiness. There's a church that's walking in holiness, and the umbrella is covering them. It's an umbrella of covering, okay? And the more the sin comes in, the more all the dirtiness comes in in the world, the abortions, all the trash. The, the wages of sin, it, it causes gap in between because of it. And the enemy comes in more and more with all his garbage. Compromise comes in. Things happen. And it opens doors for the devil to rob you. That's what I try to tell you all. When you walk in, you, you walk in compromise, you can be oppressed by demonic spirits. If you open in the doors for, 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 for the devil to through, through pornography, through all these stuff. And I'm going to go back to this, okay? Oh, I can't keep skipping around. Um, so you need, you need a resource of what is real money. If Say, say the banks don't, are all closed and you don't have a, a means to get in the banks because the electric grid's down. So that means all digital platform money is locked up. You can't use your card. You can't use your uh, ATM or whatever because it's all locked up if you can't go. So how do you pay for those those things? I have a friend and he's very educated and he talks about uh, gold bonds and all that. I'm not here to tell you how to invest. I'm not a financial advisor. But if you have things to barter with is what I'm trying to tell you. Actual gold, actual silver, actual uh, uh, maybe actual cash on hand maybe some maybe some uh pew pew shells maybe some food maybe something because because you know there's gonna be people that are, they're crazy they ain't hearing 
They hear it. The world ain't hearing. But the body of Christ can be the salt of the earth right now. I'm trying to paint a picture to you all to try to think different. Maybe, maybe you can have um, a loaf of maybe some maybe some a bag of rice. Maybe some bag of rice, and they and they don't have anything in their house, and they're going, man, I I need. I, 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 we're hungry. We don't have anything. But you give them the bag of rice or the beans or whatever. And you're able to help them out to get a meal in their stomach. Just to get through the next day. I don't know. All I know is, what's real food? What, what could be sustainable? Like canned tuna or whatever. I don't know. What's real energy? If you don't have any power in your house, you don't have any um, uh, way to, 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 to look in at night and it's completely dark in your house. If there is no uh, power grid, if, there, if it's cold outside and it's uh, 13 below zero up north and the power grid goes out and there's no gas or there's something like that that happens, what would you do? Most people, unless you live in the country, you can't save a whole lot of gasoline for your car in city because it's against the law. You can't put big containers full of gas in your, in, in your neighborhood. But if you live in the city, I mean, in the country, maybe you you can get 50 gallons of gas in a big drum or something and put some stabilizer in it or, or use it and replenish it. Re use it and replenish it until something would happen. Being uh, active and being proactive instead of reactive. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so you have an, a, a, maybe a, a, I got a um, one of those little wood burning stoves that you could run a pipe out the window or something if you had to uh, keep warm so you don't freeze to death. Thinking things like that. I saw one on Amazon for like 300 bucks. You could get all those little wood stoves, you know. Maybe you could get a generator that ran, runs on all, all three different kinds of fuel. Maybe you need uh, uh, electricity. Maybe you could get you a little uh, solar power thing, you know. Off of Amazon, they have all kinds of a little solar power stuff. Just study things out. What is a real energy source? What's a true need? What's a true need? What's life and death to you? If you if you don't have a certain thing, can you live without it? I know women need per feminine hygiene stuff. They're going to need that. That's something that it's it's very very bad if you don't have that. You know, for a woman, they need that kind of stuff. You need toothpaste. You need deodorant. You know, that those are things that you really need. Most guys, you really need some deodorant in the summer, <laughs> you know. Um, toothpaste to wash your teeth. Soap to wash your body. You may, you may be able to have a, 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 a source of water. I, I, the Lord has really put it on my heart about water and drought. Having a, a source of water to be able to, to water your plants. If you have a garden. If there is no water, if the water's tainted and poisoned, what would happen? What could you do to be able to have water? Because three days without water and you're gone, right? That's what they say. So you got to have a place of, 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 maybe you could get you some bottled waters. Maybe you could get some gallons of water. I don't know. I'm just saying you've you got to think. It's not about fear. And like I said, the people that are in um, Arizona's needs are going to be different than the people in Florida's needs. The people in, in Arkansas's needs are going to be different. So you, there's no set thing of what's saying, you need to have this. Because you could get off on all kinds of stuff and go, well, I need glow sticks, I need beeswax candles, I need all this stuff, and, 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 and who knows? That's why I'm trying to tell you, it's, this is time to seek him for your life. People ask me, what do I need? What do I need, Brandon? What do I need to get? I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know where you even live. Well, I live in Singapore. Okay, well, I've never been to Singapore. I don't know. I don't know what you should have. All I know is that it's going to be different everywhere. If your root, like people are saying this to me, and this is the revelation. You're still, you're saying, I have an issue with alcohol. I have an issue with cigarettes. I have an issue with pornography. I have an anger issue. And you start attacking the issue, the fruit of the issue. You need to go back to the root. Why am I doing this? Why? Because you're attacking the fruit. It's like I told you, the tree. What? Why is this tree of my life bringing forth this fruit? What's the root cause of me and my heart, and my heart, and my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions that's causing the fruit to display an anger towards my wife? You might be, you might backbite or, or, or be a gossip you might be all kinds of bad things and you're always praying for the fruit but father help me with my fruit help me with my fruit 
but you need to go back to the root of why you're doing what you're doing. What is going on inside of you to attack the root of the issue instead of just attacking the fruit? I hope this is helping. So that's where you, so you go into, so what am I really feeling? I'm, I'm feeling insecure about myself. I'm feeling, I, I eat because I, I'm having a hard pressure. I, you, 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 you go to food, you go to these things, these addiction habits because of a root inside of you. And that's what you need to fix so that your fruit changes. So your root changes. The problem is the root of America, not the fruit. The problem is the root of the household of why you keep getting a divorce after a divorce after a divorce. Some people say, oh, I've been married five times. I've been... Why is the fruit coming out that you keep getting a divorce? What's the root cause inside of you, the brokenness inside of you that keeps going to marriage after marriage after marriage? Why do you keep going to that kind of a person, that kind of guy, that kind of girl? That you, that you know that's abusive or, or dysfunctional and you keep going back to them. How do you fix the root inside of you so you can get a different fruit? That's what I'm trying to tell you all. And I know that might be, that might, I'm not trying to, um, to poke at you, but, but everybody's wanting to know how to fix their situations. And the only way you're going to do that is, is fix you, fix you inside. And the only way you're going to do that is, is the word. So that's really what I have for y'all today. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus for this word that you gave me to give to these people. And I thank you, Father, that you are you are giving them wisdom. Revelation knowledge will flow, flow freely into their minds. Father, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over their minds right now. We bind the spirit of fear. Perfect love cast out all fear. We rise up with who we are supposed to be in these last days and that, and that walking in the victory of the power of the name of Jesus and our covenant of who you are in us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we will not fear death for to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we have wisdom, revelation on what to do for our families, whether if it's to be relocated or if it's to stay where we are. But if we're to stay where we are, you show us what we need to get, to buy, to, to have for our families. Father, to have wisdom that we're not moved out of emotion and need, out of a fear-based moving. Oh, I got to go out there and hoard all the peanut butter I can. No. Be led, filled with, and controlled by the Holy Ghost. Be filled with and controlled by the Holy Ghost in these last days. We, we, we do not rush out and do things immediately, but we yield ourselves to you, Holy Ghost, and we say, what is your agenda for my life? Show me you are my great uh, way maker. You're the planner. You're, 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 my, you're my advocate. You're my comforter. You're my standby. You're everything. You are everything to me. You're the pilot, and I'm not even the co-pilot. I'm in the back seat letting you just steer my life. I thank you, Father, that you're, you're giving us that mind of Christ. We have it. You said we have the mind of Christ, and we tap into that mind of Christ right now. We thank you, Lord, that we, we will hear your voice, and a strange voice will not follow. I thank you, Lord, that you tell us if we need to get medicines, if we need to get prescriptions, if we need to do these things, and you say, this is what you need to do. I pray a spirit of peace, for you said, peace I live with you, I leave with you, my peace I give to you. We operate in that peace, even with hard words. We are not moved by emotion, we're not moved by flesh. We're moved by the love of God. And I thank you, Lord, that your love has, is never failing. It's overflowing for the people who turn and repent from their wicked ways. Just like you said with, with Jonah. We repent and we turn from our wicked ways. For you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then they will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. 
But he said, turn from your wicked ways. Turn from the wicked ways. And then you'll heal our land. So, Father, we, we repent and we get our hearts right before you. And we turn our, from our wicked ways and we humble ourselves. We humble ourselves, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for your, for, your, for, 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 for your love and your compassion for your people. And I thank you, Father, for you lead and you guide us into all truth and all knowledge in the name of Jesus. And Father, we take authority over sickness and disease. We take authority over all kinds of viruses and over sickness and over plagues and over, over diabetes and cancers and heart disease and glaucoma and all kinds of things that the people are overcoming. Everything that we need was, was provided by your stripes on your back. You became sickness for us. You became uh, broken for us. You were, you were wounded for us. You did it all for us. And we thank you, Lord, for what you did on the cross. And we receive it right now in the name of Jesus by faith. We receive that redemption by faith, your grace. And we thank you, Lord, for it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we everybody say amen. So that's what I have for you all today. I just want to say thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for all the likes and all, all the contributions, the blessings and everything that you've done o over the course of since I've been doing this. My family truly appreciates it. Oh, you all, it's mean so much to us. And I just want to keep telling you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for their support and for all the love that you've shared to us. I just want to say, put a smile on your face and a song on your heart. Jesus loves you so much and we love you and we thank you for watching our videos. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.